What's the difference between incident to billing criteria and the general supervision requirements for billing? Find out next. Hi, I'm Blair Telemeyer, and I work with pharmacists who want to build and grow their clinical consulting services. Billing for pharmacist-led services is an increasingly interesting opportunity for consultant pharmacists, but there are two main differences in the ability to bill for pharmacist-led services. The first difference is services that are required to be billed under the Incident 2 criteria. So Incident 2 means it's billed under the direct supervision of a physician. This has to be done in the same office. A few examples of Incident 2 billing can be using the actual Incident 2 billing CBT codes, which we'll talk about in a later video, or annual wellness visits, for instance. If a pharmacist is going to go in a physician's office and provide an annual wellness visit, they are beholden to the direct supervision of the physician. Now, this is different than personal supervision because they don't have to be in the same room as the physician but they do have to be in the same building or under the same roof as the physician. So the second opportunity that is different than Incident 2 billing is services that can be provided under the general supervision of the collaborative physician. These can be provided by a non-physician provider or an auxiliary staff member that has some type of financial relationship with the clinic under the general supervision which can be off-site. It does not need to be under the same roof like the direct supervision requirements of the Incident 2 billing services. The last important point to remember here is that each area of the country is different. So each MAC or Medicare Administrative Contractor may view auxiliary personnel and Incident 2 billing requirements a little bit differently. Layer that on top of state-by-state variations in Pharmacy Practice Acts, and pharmacists have to be very careful about entering into collaborative practice agreements with physicians. As a recap, more and more consultant pharmacists are entering into collaborative practice agreements with physicians, whether they're providing incident to billing opportunities such as uh, MTM services or annual wellness visits, or they're offering the services that can be provided under the general supervision of a physician like chronic care management and transitional care management services, there are tons of opportunities for pharmacists to get out there and offer their services and to be able to practice at the peak of their profession. If this was helpful to you, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for more information on pharmacist-led billing opportunities, join the Pharmapreneur Community Newsletter. It can be found at btpharmacyconsulting.com forward slash newsletter.